as we begin, we'll go through some definitions associated with batteries, battery failure modes, the IEEE recommendations for batteries, NERC and FERC regulations, as well as tests and inspections. This should take approximately one hour. So with regard to types, a battery is a container containing one or more cells carrying electrical charge used as a power source, typically used in backup or standby for power in various applications, and it has a amp hour capacity rating to deliver that required power uh, through an outage. As we go through this presentation, we'll be using some of the following definitions. And associated with capacity, it describes the ability to deliver constant current at a rated rate expressed in amp hours. Float voltage refers to the voltage that is applied continuously to a cell to maintain the cell to a fully charged condition. This is important when we're doing uh, predictive or preventative maintenance associated with a battery and will be covered later on. Flow current is the current supplied by the charger to keep the batteries in a flow condition. This is an interaction of the flow voltage and internal resistance of the battery. Uh, specific gravity is the ratio of weight of a solution to the weight of an equal volume of water at a specific temperature. State of charge is indicated by the level of stored a charge stored in the battery. It does not indicate the battery's capacity and is measured through a voltage measurement of each individual cell. The state of health is an indication of a battery's ability to support load. We can obtain state of health through two methods, being ohmatic testing as well as a capacity discharge test. There are two different types of batteries in the marketplace, primary shells, cells, these are non-rechargeable batteries, and secondary cells. These include lead acid batteries, NICAD, and lithium ion. These are the batteries that we'll be reviewing today. Associated with secondary batteries, we have lead acid both in a flooded or vented uh, configuration as shown, or a sealed or valve-regulated lead acid configuration. Nickel cadmium batteries also in flooded or sealed, along with other chemistries that could be used in our application, which are lithium ion or nickel metal hydride. Starting lighting and ignition batteries are involved typically in automotive applications. These are lead antimony design. They typically have strong plates for repeated cycling effects of heat, of discharge and discharging and charging. And they are typically with thinner plate surfaces. This means that they can deliver high volumes of current in a small period of time. They are only meant to be discharged in small amounts and not good for deep charging cyclic applications. Again, automotive industry typically uses these type of batteries. The standby batteries, which are used in utility applications, um, need to maintain uh, a readiness so they are typically under charge unless they are needed. These are used in substation applications for protective relay, telecommunications, data centers or large uh, uninterruptible power supplies, typically lead calcium design and they're good for long periods of float because of no antimony poisoning. Uh, and they're good for repeated uh, charge and discharge cycling. The plate thickness in, is dictated by the capacity. So the more surface area, the higher the capacity, the thicker the plates, the longer the lifespan, as a rule of thumb. So battery construction is associated with uh, in two classifications as we go through today, lead acid batteries and nickel cadmium batteries. Both forms of batteries can be either flooded type or sealed type. In power systems, lead acid are very common. Flooded types are known as vented or VLA batteries and sealed types are known as v 
ZRLA or valve-regulated blood acids. 